During the tense and secretive days of the Cold War, submarine technology evolved exponentially as the Americans and Soviets pushed each other forward in a never-ending race for naval supremacy. But while already discreet about the so-called silent service, most American developments remain classified to this day, and the U.S. Navy is particularly reticent about its Seawolf class. Originally intended as the most advanced undersea attack vessels, the U.S. government axed the program when the Cold War ended and the threat of high-tech Soviet submarines evaporated. However, the youngest of the class's sisters, the infamous USS Jimmy Carter, would continue with her family's heritage and become one of the stealthiest Pentagon spies, so much so that the U.S. Navy has barely recognized her capabilities other than for basic submarine roles. Still, the facade is evident, and there are several pieces of evidence that point to her crucial part in more dangerous and mysterious missions. In early 2013, Jimmy Carter sailed from her home port in Washington and reappeared roughly two months later after a mysterious operation that earned her a presidential unit citation, with both experts and the public alike trying to piece out the true nature of the endeavor by putting together the clues. Submarine Development Squadron 5 In 1983, design work began for a new type of submarine to succeed the Los Angeles class. The Seawolf nuclear-powered fast attack design was conceived to combat the increasing threat of ever more advanced Soviet ballistic missile submarines. Conceptualized for deep ocean environments, the Seawolf's hull was constructed from HY-100 steel, stronger than the previous HY-80. This newer metal could withstand water pressure at greater depths. Larger, Faster and significantly quieter than its predecessor, the Seawolf had a broader host of weapons, as well as twice as many torpedo tubes for her Mark 48 torpedoes. In fact, her ships had the capacity to carry 50 UGM-109 Tomahawk cruise missiles for both land and sea surface targets. In addition, their extensive equipment allowed for shallow water operations, as this class featured an advanced Archie-modified ANBSY-2 combat system with an enhanced spherical sonar array a wide aperture array, and a new towed array sonar. Moreover, the submarines were powered by an S6W nuclear reactor of 45,000 horsepower, which drove a low-noise pump jet. The Seawolf's advanced design resulted in a particularly high cost, and at $3 billion per unit, the model became the most expensive nuclear-powered attack submarine, and the second most expensive submarine in history, only surpassed by the French nuclear-powered ballistic missile Triumphant class. The original plan called for 29 submarines to be built over a decade, but that amount was eventually reduced to 12. As the Cold War ended and budget constraints took over, further additions to the fleet were cancelled in 1995. Only three Seawolf-class submarines were ever built. The first two models, Seawolf and Connecticut, were launched and commissioned in the late 1990s, while the third, Jimmy Carter, was not launched until the 2000s. The three sisters were eventually grouped together as the core of Submarine Development Squadron 5, which is currently responsible for testing contemporary underwater listening gear and remote-controlled submersibles, either tethered or autonomous. Likewise, the squadron is developing innovative Arctic fighting tactics to take advantage of the site's natural properties that allow underwater vessels to hide from their opponents. However, the unit is not on the record as being involved in intelligence gathering. Despite the team's designation implying an innocent experimental function, it is not uncommon for the U.S. Navy to use such monikers for special or elite groups. And after costing three and a half billion dollars and undergoing several modifications to comply with her unique role, USS Jimmy Carter forms part of a particular subclass altogether, one that more likely than not makes it the Pentagon's most stealthy spy submarine. Jimmy Carter In the summer of 1996, General Dynamics Corporation's Electric Boat Division was awarded a contract to build the third example of the Seawolf class, but the extensive modifications he received later departed significantly from the original design, making Jimmy Carter one of a kind. The unique boat was named after the 39th President of the United States, who notably was the only one to have qualified on submarines. Furthermore, Jimmy Carter is the only submarine named after a living president, 
and among the few in the current U.S. inventory to have the name of a living person. Her keel was laid down in late 1998, and her commission was scheduled for late 2001 or early 2002. Along the way, Electric Boat received an extension of no less than $887 million to enhance the submarine and test new systems so that she could carry out more unique and classified missions, such as the ones her distinguished predecessor, USS Parchy, used to perform. Jimmy Carter's hull was then extended by 100 feet, creating a 2,500-ton supplementary module, and her hourglass-shaped middle section, which formed an enigmatic multi-mission platform, or MMP, not only allowed for an assortment of operations, but also fueled several theories about its actual use. The section features an ocean interface for divers, remotely operated vehicles, special operation equipment, ROV handling systems, storage, and deployment space for mission systems. Plus, the ship was fitted with a pressure-resistant passage between the fore and aft areas for crew accommodation. Still, beyond allowing the launch and recovery of remotely operated underwater vehicles and Navy SEALs, it is said that the platform may have other purposes while carrying out secretive missions. Authors Sherry Sontag and Christopher Drew, who co-wrote Blind Man's Bluff, the untold story of American submarine espionage, argued that the expanded midsection would house the same gear as USS Parchy, while intelligence experts have speculated that the platform may also be used as an underwater splicing chamber to tap undersea fiber optic cables. In addition, Jimmy Carter was outfitted with custom-made thrusters that help her stabilize above a target and stay stationary even in extreme currents. This way, the ship could easily maneuver while planting listening devices on the ocean floor. The submarine was christened on June 5, 2004 by former First Lady Rosalind Carter, and she completed Alpha Sea trials in November. The following month, Electric Boat delivered the vessel to the U.S. Navy, and she was commissioned in February of 2005, six years after her older sister, and right behind the first Virginia-class model. Despite her late entrance into operational status, the changes Jimmy Carter endured would guarantee a more exciting and mysterious career than most submarines. However, as of today, drones and SEAL deployment capabilities are the only uses the Navy is willing to admit. Mystery Mission In early 2013, the 150 crew members on board Jimmy Carter left their home port and then sailed for two months from Bangor in Washington to Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Whatever her mission was, it earned the vessel a repair intermission and a presidential unit citation. While every year, the units on land, air, and sea must turn over a historical report to the Naval History and Heritage Command, there's no requirement that they go into any specific detail. The ship's official annual history only refers to the event as Mission 7, but the document does note that, quote, performed under a wide range of adverse and extremely stressful conditions without external support, this deployment continued USS Jimmy Carter's tradition of excellence in pursuit of vital national security goals. Moreover, the honorable distinction requires, quote, extraordinary heroism in action against an armed enemy. Still, the mission was given as much attention as a summer picnic or the crew's Halloween party. Even though the presidential unit citation for the sailing branch is comparable to bestowing the ship with a Navy cross, exactly what the crew of 150 did is merely described by the Secretary of the Navy as, quote, extremely difficult and hazardous. To add to the mystery, the task was executed alongside sailors from the even more secretive Detachment Undersea Research and Development. As reported in the memo, both units, quote, successfully completed extremely demanding and arduous independent submarine operations of vital importance to the national security of the United States and overcame numerous obstacles to safely execute these demanding and complex tasks without incident. In addition to the report, two attachment pictures have also added to the speculations. The photos show Jimmy Carter's captain, Commander Brian Elkowitz, and other officers displaying the framed citation. And in both, an individual's face is blacked out. The files in question were obtained through the Freedom of Information Act by the War is Boring platform. Most likely, Jimmy Carter has taken over USS Parchy's previous mission to tap undersea fiber optic communications in the same manner the former spy submarine used to do with obsolete Soviet copper lines. However, given the Navy's highly secretive attitude towards the Seawolf family, the younger sister's records are closer to a series of rumors than an actual binnacle of activities. 
While Sontag and Drew published their book before Jimmy Carter was even finished, the Navy and its partners have had plenty of time to improve the vessel further. In 2001, when General Dynamics was still assembling the submarine, NSA Director Lt. Gen. Michael Hayton laughed off rumors about breaking into undersea cables during an interview with the Wall Street Journal. Before refusing to discuss the matter altogether, he stated, quote, I'm not going to sit here and dissuade you from your views. Twenty years later, and after an apparent decidedly active service, not much else has been unveiled about the submarine or her operations. When Jimmy Carter finally returned to her home port in 2017, she was flying the Jolly Roger flag alongside the Stars and Stripes one, a centenary tradition that indicates she successfully completed her mission. Still, it may take a century before the public learns what that mission was in the first place. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think Jimmy Carter is up to nowadays? And don't forget to subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the bell icon to get notified of our new history-inspired content. Stay tuned.